I, I don't intend to spend much time talking about the issues other members have talked about. I've waxed lyrical or gratingly on them, according to your point of view, uh, over the past year and, and a half. But two points I did want to, to make, and that is that the people of Wales did not vote for the Conservatives, uh, and they did not vote for a Conservative government. Let's be clear about that. I grant the Conservatives the fact that it was a very good result historically from their perspective, but let's not pretend that the Conservatives represent Wales. Secondly, it's been suggested uh, by my colleague Alan Davis that uh, there are some in this chamber, well, the mathematics is there for all to see, there are some in this chamber who take the view that we have no right, no right to express a view on this LCM. Indeed, uh, the member opposite, whose name I forget, uh, said that in fact not only did we not have a right to oppose this LCM, but that we should be abolished for opposing this LCM. Well, this is my country, this is my parliament. And I see my government in front of me, and I want my country to continue to exist. Thanks very much. I'm going to focus purely on Clause 38. I was surprised that David Melding couldn't uh, deal with it, and uh, by his standards, uh, I'm sure he will respond in due course. But it simply says this, Clause 38.1. It says, it is recognised that the Parliament of the United Kingdom is sovereign. Now, some may say, well, what's, what's the problem with that? Well, what's the point of it? What is the point of something that, that if the Parliament of the UK is already sovereign, why put it in law? Because it's not in law anywhere else, it's just graffiti. Or is it the case that the UK government have realised that the Parliament of the UK is not in fact sovereign? There is nothing in law that says the Parliament of the UK is sovereign at all. Nothing. It's a convention and the courts have respected that convention, but the courts have said in opinions that where in the future they felt that an act of Parliament was oppressive, where it was draconian, uh, where it was clearly ridiculous, then they would reserve the right to themselves to intervene if they saw fit. But they saw that only in extremis. What this clause does is remove the right of the courts to look at any primary legislation drafted by the UK government. That is a dangerous course of action. It was Lord Hailsham, a Conservative peer, who said in the late 1970s that the British Constitution was effectively an elective dictatorship. And so it is. And by including this clause... It makes it even worse. It says the UK Parliament can do whatever it wants, whenever it wants, with no interference at all during its time in office. That cannot be democratic, and it cannot be right as far as the Constitution is concerned. And there is nothing in law that says the UK Parliament is sovereign. Nothing. And so this is why I suspect this has appeared, to make up for the fact that a convention, whilst it's been respected over the years, is not actually law but when you make it law you make it far more difficult for example for the courts to take a view on laws Do you want a good word, uh, of course i will I, i'm grateful to the uh, uh, first minister emeritus um, the, <laughs> we're in a common law uh, system uh, it was in the 1690s that uh, parliamentary sovereignty was first expressed by the courts and the reason it can't be encoded is parliament itself is the extreme uh, uh, an ultimate expression of the law. That's the system we have, unless we move to a different system. Well, it, 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 what, what David Mellon refers to is correct. In 1689, the Earl of Shaftesbury said that the, UK Parliament, uh, that the English Parliament was sovereign. But the English Parliament doesn't exist anymore. The English Parliament disappeared in 1707, as did the Scottish Parliament. The Parliament of the United Kingdom, there is no law at all that says that that is sovereign. And the reason why that's important is because in Scotland, there's no concept at all of parliamentary sovereignty. The Declaration of Arbroath in 1380, which you'll all be familiar with, of course, says that sovereignty in Scotland rests with the people. That's still the case today in Scots constitutional law. Still the case. And the Scottish courts have expressed an opinion in that regard, and particularly in cases in the 50s to the 70s. What does that mean in practice? It means that if this clause becomes law, Scotland will have imposed on it a form of sovereignty that firstly doesn't exist in Scotland and certainly cuts across the Treaty of Union in 1707. And the Scottish courts have said that is something that they're willing to look at in terms of its justiciability. Doesn't affect us in Wales, I grant you, because our court system was abolished gradually between 1536 and 1830. But this actually is a fundamental attack on the 1707 Treaty of Union in Scotland. Now, I'll leave it to the Scots to fight their own battle, but it's something that just hasn't been noticed. Parliamentary sovereignty has never been part of the law of the United Kingdom with regard to the Parliament of the United Kingdom, apart from now. And I've already explained uh, the consequences of that. Finally, the other point I want to make is, is this. I could not support this LCM. There are many other reasons that other members have mentioned. And it's nothing to do with Brexit. But I do not support the idea of parliamentary sovereignty. 
It's an outdated concept, and it's about time the UK had a more modern constitution. We can look at shared sovereignty. Why entrench a system that is ragged and is not fit for the purpose? That is a typical Westminster bubble amendment that's been put into this legislation, ignoring the reality of the existence of other parliaments within the UK. Sovereignty rests with the people of Wales. They expressed that sovereignty through a referendum in 1997 and in 2011, and they expressed that view in 2016, and they said we want to leave the EU. I don't dispute that. But that sovereignty rests with the people of Wales as expressed through those referendums. And what will we have if this clause passes? A system of no checks and balances. Five years where a government can do absolutely anything it wants without any kind of restriction. This is a fundamental change to the way the UK has been governed. It's undemocratic. It's not in any party's manifesto. It takes us backwards. It entrenches in law something that's never been there before. And it is a fundamental misunderstanding and possibly attack on the nature of devolution within the UK. And for that reason, along with many others, I could not support this LCM. Neil Hamilton. Well, in her impassioned speech uh, earlier on, Lynn Neagle talked about this.